Yes, I want to welcome you to the show tonight. I, I'm having, um, it's going to be a great show. And I tell you why it's going to be a great show is because I'm expecting Miss Mashika Lauren on the show tonight. Somehow she hasn't come on as yet, but hey, what can I say? We'll just um, hang around, but at the same time, we'll have a conversation. It's a Saturday evening, 16th of May, 2020. And of course the show must goes on, yeah? And there's so many things which, which is happening and many discussions that can take place. Um, but one of the key things that I wanted to have a speak, um, had a chat with uh, Amashika was one regarding um, yeah, Child Month, which is May, May, which is Child Month. And two, another thing also is, is that the, the mask, she also created some masks and I wanted to have some discussion on that because there's a wide array of masks which has been created now due to uh, COVID. But the most important thing at the same time, what is happening regarding the mask is because various countries, various countries are having their discussions and making their deliberation and making their pronouncement that mask is important and mask is good. What we are seeing in the situation whereby countries and people and individuals, entrepreneurs are also getting into the action and as well creating masks. That, that creative spirit is happening out there where people are actually seeing an opportunity at this time. And the other thing which I, I wanted to, to talk about was I'll share the book and, and to talk about that. But anyway, let me go on. I, I, I want to say this, and uh, in, in regards to, to Child Month, and the, the, one, one, of, one of the key things is, and, and, and if anybody know, know what I do, what do you do, Sidburn? Yeah, you're just a talk show guy. You're just a guy who comes on and um, create controversy with your points. Uh, what is it that you do? Are you a politician, a conservative politician, or whatever like that? Yes, yes, yes to all of them. But I'm also a child care lawyer. And, uh, you know, one of the things that when cases come to me, uh, cases are at a crisis proportion, if anything like that. Because when it comes to me from my position um, as an advocate, is when it gets into court. And when it gets into court, it can go all different ways, all different ways. And I've been doing that from 2004, 2005 or so. And uh, it's my main um, thing which I do. I, I find it very intriguing and, and interesting because um, you, you, you read a lot about what happened to children, very much a, a lot of what happened to children. You sometimes do not meet the children, but you read a lot. And, uh, and sometimes persons will say that uh, social workers are overzealous, but I'm going to defend social workers at this point to say that actually many social workers save children lives. You're going to have the cases, of course, where things go a bit um, off, if anything. But without a doubt, um, majority of cases, I believe, um, is, you know, you know, works out very well. I know a child cel celebration month in May, as I say, in Jamaica, we look at different this year due to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. It seems like everything or most things are having uh, a situation whereby, whereby it is not happening because of COVID-19. You want to walk down the road, it's COVID-19. You want to jump in the plane, it's COVID-19. Uh, you want to go to a party, it's COVID-19. Everything is COVID-19. How are you, Jody? Are you really, Rika? Everything is COVID-19. Um, so when do we go past the, the stage, which is COVID-19? But without ado, no further ado, I will um, get Miss Amashika Lauren in the house and I'll say to her, how are you? Hi, I am well. I am well. <laughs> A ah. bit free. Okay, good. Good, good. I heard your voice because I was saying I was I wasn't hearing the voice, so I said, "Let me see if if the voice is coming all the way from Jamaica and going over." <laughs> I hadn't heard much. It's just a little hot today. It's you know we're gearing up for the summer, so these days the heat is up. Yes, yes. Well, listen. I want to thank you for coming on. I was uh, when I had Chris Tufton last week. He had to come a bit late because he had a meeting so I had a, a doctor friend who was online and I said listen you got to be the warm-up guy you know so he came on and did the warm-up before Christopher Tufton came so I was thinking who's going to be my warm-up person 
So I was trying to get hold of someone named Sharika, and she said, oh, she's in Brixton. I was going to get her to be my warm-up person tonight. <laughs> you know? But I did I did the warm-up, um, Amashika. I did a warm-up tonight, you know? But listen, I want to thank you for coming on. And, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, Amashika is... Um, uh, 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 I'm not going to say your age. <laughs> you have your age. I'm not going to say your age. Um, is a media personality in Jamaica. Uh, I think I'm still considered youth in the Commonwealth definition. Yeah. Okay, so you're a millennial. Mi millennial. Yes, I'm the upper band of the millennial batch. <laughs> okay, okay. So therefore, you, you see, you're trying to qualify in the world. When you look at persons in the 20s, between 20 and 25, yes. and then, you know, well, 20 and 24, and then 25 to 30, those two groups see the world very differently. So people might say, oh, you are in your 20s. Yes. We are two different batches of people. We interact with social media differently. Our consumer behavior is also very different. Our goals and aspirations are different. Yes. So there, I'm the upper batch <laughs> of the millennials. Okay, so I guess I'm in that batch as well because I consider myself a millennial as well. I choose to be a millennial. Uh, you can you, you can you can choose to be something. <laughs> yeah. Is it really yes. you? Because you can choose it, but it has to resonate deeply, or else it's going to be inauthentic. So that's something that a lot of millennials during this time we go through to figure out who we are, what kind of legacy we want to create for ourselves. You know, we see a lot of things on TV. We see the people who we used to idolize, but then you start to refine who, who was important, who was not, who was just fluff, who was of substance. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, um, and ladies and gentlemen, um, a past student of Woolmouth Preparatory, a Woolmouth Girl High School, and she's also on CVM in the morning. Uh, a media personality, and uh, and I've been following um, Amashika for a while. <laughs> We've been communicating. We, I've been trying to get you on my show for a while, <laughs> and and I said, I said when I when I saw the the mask that you were doing, I, I said mm -hmm. uh, this is an opportune time. But then also I saw the book that you're writing as well, and I said it's an opportune time, and then. Uh, I said, let's do it uh, as a batch. But but first of all, let's let's talk about um, Child Month okay. because I, I think I, I was I was talking about Child Month a while ago. Yeah, tell us about Child Month and the work that you're doing in regards to Child Month. Your your pet peeves, yeah. My pet peeves. <laughs> so Child Month in Jamaica. No, no, maybe pet peeves is not the right word. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> So normally, your passion. you know, it's a time where we put a lot of emphasis on the nation's youth. You have past students going back to their primary or prep schools or even their high schools giving talks. You know, you ramp up mentorship, mentorship sessions, workshops. You know, you're really just trying to show them love and care during this time. But because of coronavirus and how schools, schools have been closed since March the 13th in Jamaica, and the last update from Minister yeah. Samuda was that we'll continue distance learning up until July 7th. I believe that's the date, July 7th. And yes. physically reopening is to happen in on September the 7th. So distance learning is still the order of the day. Zoom, Google Meets, all of these things are how teachers are trying to connect. Um, but it's now all virtual. And that's... A bit of a drama. Yeah. So some students like it. My little brother, he was born, he's now 15. He was born at a time where as soon as he came out of the womb, he knows how to swipe and pose for a selfie. So he was even helping my mom to navigate this whole Google Meet, Zoom meeting type. So he he likes this. He he loves this. But of course, he misses his friends. He misses that playtime with other people. Um, so that's what this challenge is. But I mean you're now spending more time at home with the people that you love, you should love, you know? So it's a matter of how do you yeah. keep it fun and engaging with them? So yes, I know you might have a long day, but they want some, so children don't say, I've had a long day, I need to de-stress. They say, mommy, I want a color, or daddy, come play with me, or to their sister, come, yeah. you know, give me a lift up or a hug or let's run outside. So that's how they communicate mm. that they want some attention, they want some time. So you have to listen and basically respond in a way that they will appreciate. So that's what more families are doing at this time. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I noticed that the chair of the National Child Month, um, as Dr. Pauline Mullins said, although the activities have been significantly modified, of course, because of COVID, there'll, be, there'll still be opportunities for parents, caregivers, and the general public to celebrate the nation's children. Um, the, the, there, has been, there, there were some cases recently, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not seeing much happening now coming from Jamaica, but there were lots of atrocities against children for a period of time, and it was in the news a lot. I, I know COVID has somewhat everything it away. Please, I'm, I'm listening, what do you say? It continues, it hasn't gone away. Um, the most right. recent batch of cases would have had to do, you saw them coming out with um, domestic violence. So where you saw yes. it having implications for the children involved. So whether it was, you know, the, the one of the parents were the biological parent or not, you know, they're having a dispute and it has implications for the child. The child is killed, the child is hurt or harmed. The child is trying to step in. Um, but yeah, the kidnappings, yeah. We have so many missing persons still. Um, and within the last two weeks, there was a shooting, some reprisal, and children yeah. were harmed. Caught in the middle. So the nation's youth mm. are still being targeted. And how can we say we really love each other and we have these things happening and we're not passing over the information to the police? Yeah. Uh, we're not allowing the, info, you know, the investigations to go through. Um, so it is a very big concern. Just this week, a mother was charged for not reporting sexual abuse for her child. Uh, so yes. we have a lot of things to fix. We do have a lot of things to fix with regard to our youth and how we treat them. And, and that, young lady, that young lady has not been found yet, that young lady from U University of West Indies, even though? So 20, I think she's 22, between 22 and 23, visually impaired student, um, yeah. Jasmine Dean, very yes. popular, um, hashtag, you know, find mm. Jasmine Dean. She has still not been found. She went missing February, about February 27th. That's February 27th to March 27th. You know, like so many months have passed. Um, we've gotten bits and pieces yes. of information. Uh, two men were charged <coughs> in relation to her investigation, but yes. still no word. So, but that's just one case. And that's a case because we had senators talking about it. We had high yes. profile persons talking about it. There are so, and I mean, Jasmine is not a Mafood. She's not a Issa. She's not from a certain um, community. Family. In yeah. But there are many people who go missing and, you know, their families are hurting. And mm. it, it must be really devastating for Jasmine's dad, especially, and you know, his, his, the family at this time yeah. because it's where is she has she been trafficked elsewhere um is she in another parish is she even alive so yes. we still have hope that some yeah. way somehow somebody will spot a random girl in their community and just say hi who, yeah. you know who, and, and get her to a police station i that for i'll say for me that is my hope that somebody will be when we're able to you know really wander outside somebody will see a very strange face see this girl and say hey make yeah. communication you know communicate with her and she can do it i hope so <clears throat> so what we are talking about is also the nation in a way be a part of the solution by being proactive and not be a silent bystander when they see certain things happening absolutely absolutely like even in your communities yeah. missing persons once you know the people, you know, back in the day, we used to know everybody in our community, you yeah. know your name, mm -hmm. you know what tree them have you, you know what you can exchange. But then as you grow older, the crime and the fear, everybody's locked mm. up um, in their own homes. They don't, you don't see them at all. You don't see them in yeah. Christmas time, not at all, not even in the summer. And so you yeah. start to see strange faces on your road. And some people will call the police and say, you know, yeah. I've noticed a group of men walking late at night, you know, in hoodies. That's, you know, they don't live here, but they I see them every night. Some people just be like, it's not yes. my business. Not my circus. <clears throat> you know, not my monkey, not my circus. Leave it alone. No, you have to say something. Yeah. That's that habit of, you know, we used to say in in form of a dead. No, we need to banish that. We need to speak up. Because yeah. All of us are at risk. Speak up. So, um, yeah, we need more citizens to be involved and more active and yeah. just involve in the community and bring back that community spirit because that's where the fabric of the society is yeah. the family in the home and then it's the yes. in the home in the community in the church in the school in the government yeah. in the 
that's in the home. Yeah. You see, I'm also keen in this particular area because my main profession is a child care lawyer. Um, I have a friend of mine who is a barrister, criminal, and he always say when people meet him, he's always at the the bad part. You know, it's like he doesn't like to be met because that is when things go down. Likewise, myself, when 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 I go to court cases and meet children, I don't meet them physically, um, but that is when it's going bad. It is when the child is to be removed and um, adoption and you know, all of those sort of things. So when I get involved, it's always the, the bad part to a certain extent. And I read a lot of things, things which I cannot say. And I, and I can say that a lot of atrocities uh, worldwide have been meted out to children. And the court and the, the social workers and everybody play a, a fundamental part of it. So, um, so kudos to you to the work that you're doing regarding um, children and, and, and childhood. But the book now, I want to bring on to the book because there's a link now with the book, isn't it? I've got to link the book to this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so the, this is my book entitled Chat to Me. Yes. And, and really the idea and came... Hmm? Pardon? No, I said chat to me and color me. Chat to me and color me. Chat, well, there's no me, it says chat See? to me and color me. So I'll get into it a little bit. You see, I know, I know, I, 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 said, I said about the book, yeah, go on. Sorry, keep, keep going, my apologies, yeah. <laughs> the idea behind it was how do we transport or to, to make cultural oral traditions move from one generation down to the next. So we have a grand thing, one of these, you know, stories or superstitions or Jamaican proverbs and sayings. How do we get them in our lives and then pass them on to even the next batch of Jamaicans? So it was just really finding a unique way to pass down things from our elders. So it is yeah. a book, it's a Jamaican theme color book that's 40 pages. Um, that you can color on with a Jamaican. I'm gonna go to one for you. So you have a Jamaican proverb or saying that's linked to a drawing. Mm -hmm. So this one here, oh, well, this one is really just a ring game. And let me just bring yes. it up close. Um, so it's basically the skip, skip, skip to Malu, very famous by Miss Lutu in terms of playing with games. Skip, skip to Malu, skip, skip, skip to Malu, skip, skip, skip to Malu, my darling, isn't it? <laughs> And then on this page, you'll see the variations of what a Jamaican child may look like. And, you know, the typical bus stop that's always um, yes. the risk gate, you know, so that the buses can come in a safe space to pick up the children to move on. Let me go to another one for you. Um, so children will be able to identify with the characters that are in the book as yeah. well. So this one, the saying yeah. is one, one cocoa full basket. Full basket, yes. Right. So... Just the, the idea of that, when you hear a grandma say that, it's like, you know, grandma, what do you mean by that? Or grandpa, what does that mean? And, you know, the explanation is there as well in terms of all of your efforts adding up. So just keep being consistent, keep doing something that you like, and you'll get the reward. Yeah. So on the coloring page to this, we see a little boy in a piggy bank. I don't know how many children even know what piggy bank is like. No, <laughs> because, you know, all of them have bank accounts, which is good. Or many of them yeah. may have a bank account or you know, they have somewhere that they put the money. But then also, it, this will help to show the change in what children dreamed of. So like in my age, you know, we wanted a bicycle. Um, yeah. Children now want a new laptop, a new phone. So it provides... Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, PS, PS4, they want to move from that to PS4 and stuff like that. So it, it allows for, if it's a grandmother <clears throat> explaining to a child, if it's a mother explaining to a child, um, to talk about the experiences. So you learned through the things that your parents wanted one time. Where did your parents first yeah. hear this thing? And it allows to boost quality family time. So that is really an aim of the book. So yes, the children will learn about, you know, cultural oral traditions and help to preserve yes. it and pass it on because it's, um, it's a really important part of the Jamaican culture, but it's a new um, and fresh way to have edutainment in the home. So they can read it, they can color it, it can be used as a coffee table book. Um, I have some friends in the UK, they don't have children yet, so they use it as a coffee table book, <laughs> shipped off mm -hmm. some to some friends in London. Um, there were children in the diaspora who were asking for it as well, so I shipped some off to Canada, UK, um, yeah. and a couple other places. So I'm, I'm happy with the reception thus far, and they've really given me some really positive feedback, so I'm, I'm grateful. 
so so the, so we, we, we can sort of summarize the book as uh, from then to now. So it, it it shows the lineage from the past to now because as you said, it showed what was before and it gave us a sort of story. But then at the same time, the children can also use it for today with the coloring as well. My daughter, she likes to color things. She's very artistic as well. So it, it shows that sort of essence. And also what it does for the UK, one of the things that we always talk about in the UK, should we teach Black History Month every day or every month? You know, in, instead of every month, but every week or so, you know, instead of waiting for the government to do this, we it's should do it. Sprinkled right throughout the year. Yes, yes. So I, I, I think, yeah, please. That. Mm. Now I'm saying, on what, for, for me, um, in our society today, it's so it's sprinkled all throughout our curriculum, um, but we do still have Black History Month in February. Um, but you see how I personally was raised, Black History is my whole life, every single day. You know, um, yeah. even when I hear people using the N word, I'm just like, I don't, I don't use it because I know it's it's derogatory. Where it's yes. coming from is derogatory, so I will never use it. My children will never use it. None of my siblings mm. will use it. None of my nephews or nieces will ever use it. Like, so when I hear you know the songs, and I'm just like, no, that's not like no matter how popular a song is, I'm not gonna subscribe to saying that. Um, but I think. Yes. You know, as one of our national heroes, Marcus Garvey would have taught us about just understanding self and identity. If that, for example, yes. was deep rooted in our our education system and in the home, let's start with the home, you wouldn't have these children bleaching. Mm. You wouldn't have this constant body more mod, <clears throat> body more. What's the word I'm looking for? Mod, body modification taking place to be something that they're not. You know, they would have a would have a deeper sense of pride about who they are, whatever shade they are, the texture of the hair. Um, yeah, they, they would just have a deeper sense of pride. So I think it's more, it's not about just the month, but how impactful mm. are the teachings. So even if you had the month for the next 5,000 years, was it impactful? Was it reaching yeah. our youth? So to find, and you know what, I'm going to find a page that we even do have Marcus Garvey in it. We have to find more palatable ways to seep into the minds of our children. And I think that's it. Finding a new approach. Because clearly what we're doing not hitting hard enough. Yes. So so for example here. So the saying for this one is two heads are better than one. Yes. And you can see a mother helping her child to do homework. And then subliminally, on the other side, you see the image of Marcus Garvey. So it's a matter of then saying, Who is this person? What you know, the child would then yeah. ask, Who is that person? Who is that man in the picture? What did he say? What are the why is he so important? Why is he in the book? It spurs questions, yeah. it ensures that the adult is also aware, yes, <laughs> and yeah. can impart this knowledge to the child. So, I think it's really just finding so, more palatable ways to reach the children. Yeah. So, Samashika, what you're saying as well is having a sense of identity. That, she, that this is teaching to have a sense of identity as you draw on to the Marcus Garvey factor. And going back to the Black History Month, uh, mm -hmm. just like yourself, I think, I know, growing up in Jamaica up to the age of 21 when I came to the UK, we all know that we're Black. We all know where we come from. We know the structure. And it's, it is sprinkled right through our curriculum. But, but the, the power of a book like that is in places like the UK. You know, power book like that is like places in the USA. But at the same time, I think you want to agree at the same time that it is still needed in Jamaica because of the influence. <laughs> in fact, I was doing a couple of meetings and pitching it um, to get some support for like the Jamaica Tourist Board. And I will always thank Donovan White. He's the director of the director of tourism at the Jamaica Tourist Board. And he said, Emma, as great as your outlook is to go abroad, you need to go deeper with education in jamaica and because mm. my focus was just you know to service the diaspora and he said no you need to remember that the jamaicans at home too from both urban and rural spaces need this kind of content so um a book one of the copies were sent over to the ministry of education and they reviewed it they gave me some feedback um so it's really so as is now it's purely edutainment um and it can yeah. work for both adults and children but when it comes on to a Ministry of Education approving something, you know, you have to then decide 
what specific age group and um, mm. ensuring that, the, you know, how appropriate the content is. So we're doing some revisions um, and hopefully we can send a new revision to them and see some work being done there. But had COVID not been here, I would have done a school tour. We're going to yeah. be doing schools, um, some workshops with a linguist specialist as well. So changes but everything within its time um, but there is there there are plans in place to infiltrate the education system here and target mm. youth in jamaica as well don't worry it's so, here <laughs> so, so we can simply say you're on a mission i'm on a mission um i love people yeah, yeah. i love i love people um and i think it might be how I was raised, understanding yeah. the sacrifices that my parents made and just that there are inequalities and some people need help more than others um, for things to, you know, be balanced. Um, and a deep sense of pride in who I am and in this identity. So those things yeah. help to give me a foundation. And as I say, I love people. I particularly love children. I love topics that have to do with the education, um, the environment and just arts and culture. So I don't know if I want to say I'm on a mission. I know that there is a purpose within. And no mm. matter where I am on the globe, it's like a guiding light and it will seep out in anything that I was doing. So like whether I was working with a foundation, I was placed on projects that helped you yeah. um, in different aspects of life. You know, the projects that I shined most on had to yeah. do with children. So it's, I guess the mission so is finding me. <laughs> Uh, well, I was, I was just about to say that you're actually coming around back to the bit, bit about a mission because I'm going to say, so that's your mission statement. <laughs> you're actually setting out your mission statement. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to stop. I, I, I'm here with Amashika Lauren, and uh, she's a media personality in Jamaica. You'll see her on CVM in the morning sometime. Actually, I remember, I think I remember one time seeing you guys trying to walk, trying to do some model walk with some guys. Some, Time it was some funny, funny with you and Raymond Price because from the overseas here in the UK, um, we only sneak mm -hmm. in sometimes and can get a little bit of little clips that you guys do and see a part of Jamaica. When we are home in Jamaica, we are in the mornings we see those things, see VM and sunrise or sunrise, I don't know, morning rise or something like that. <laughs> Before formerly known as CVM at Sunrise. Now it's Sunrise. Yeah. And of course it's shown on CVM. Yeah. Um, and I want to say now that, you know, everything is digital. We do stream live on our website. So if you are in the UK and you'd like, so our time is 6 to 8 a.m. Monday yeah. to Friday. Um, you can go log on to cvmtv.com and you can watch it live with us. And, you know, share your feedback or go to the website and watch um, reruns of different um, yes. interviews that we have done. But yeah, so I mean, people from the diaspora will message us sometimes and you know, tell us, like, if we're talking about Julie Mango and saying, Hello, yeah. can I send some for me? Because yeah. <laughs> it's mango season now. Um, or tell us about their experiences and what's happening in their community. So it and it helps to keep us informed too to know mm -hmm. what's happening in diaspora. Um, what are some yeah. of the challenges you're facing? You know, do you need your consulate? Because sometimes you see when pressure, and that's the thing as a media practitioner, you're an attorney, so you advocate in the court. But mm. in media too, we get advocate and push or force some hands. So some people may say, mm, a little penny section is making noise. If enough people hear this cry um, and understand the injustice that is taking place, it will force some people to start to respond. Right. So let us know the issues that you're having. And yeah, we definitely speak about them. Yeah. And chat to McCullough. How can people get that while in the UK and in the USA or wherever? How can they get all of that? So right now the website is, I'm going to put it up again. Yeah. I will, yeah. And color. You go to chat to me and color .com and um, yeah. I share globally. So for persons who are in the diaspora, it comes to you a lot faster because I actually have correspondence there. So in Canada, yeah. Florida, uh, um, and I have a friend in London as well. So those books come to you a lot faster because they got a batch. So once uh, I get the order, send it off my correspondence send yeah. them off um it is 13 us dollars i forgot the conversion for pound right now and um yeah that's so i'm trying to work out there's a, there's a particular bookstore i'm working on a deal with we had started negotiations and then covid happened yeah. so the, there has been quite a bit of delay in finalizing that deal in a particular bookstore so 
Hopefully it will be there soon. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just typing it. Is it chat, C-H-A-T, to me? Uh-huh. The website. Yeah. The website. C -H -A -T chat. Yeah. T-U-M-I. Well, oh, you don't, you don't. Okay, yeah. That to me, yeah. And color.com. Hello. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just repeat. Send me a message on any yeah. of my platforms. I use Twitter. Yeah. I use yeah. Instagram. I mean, I really just got back into using Twitter. Yeah. I use Instagram mostly as well as Facebook. And my name yeah. is, well, you can put up a tag I'm, for me or something. Yeah, yeah. People will be able to see that, yeah. So, so is this yeah. so mm -hmm. C-H-A-T-U-M-I-C-O-L-O-U-R? No, it's com. two T's. Ah, yes. T-T. U. M I and color.com. How is that? The and is spelled. Can I see that? Out. And you're typing to me. <laughs> I just I just type it. I just it's running it's running at the bottom there. You might not see it. But anyway, um, oh. I, yeah. Now I want to. Uh, you kept mentioning COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. <laughs> and I know it's something that many people are just fed up about oh, COVID. You know, but due to COVID, you have also we have seen another side of you whereby you are creating these masks. Everybody's doing masks these days. You know, I sometimes start to think is mask. Is it that people are also hiding behind mask? Or what is this mask? You know, it's like people feeling so comfortable with masks. But I've seen your designs. Uh, what is it that inspired you to, to, to be one of those persons creating masks? Was it a business or just helping your people? So it really just started as a dare mm -hmm. um, in terms of can I'm a really sew and can, you know, is my sewing machine working? So Raymond yes. kind of um, hinted at it and I said, you know what, I'm going to go home and see if my sewing machine is going to work. So it did work and I was able to execute the first one. Um, that was a pink one that I premiered on Sunrise for everybody to see that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I started making some for my family and then um, a couple of people in my community, some elderly persons I gave out to them. And then I had friends abroad who were saying, Amo, is this like something you're gonna be doing? Cause they know I'm really good, I'm very artsy. And they're like, is this something yes. you're gonna be doing? And I was like, no, they're like, can you make me one? And I was like, okay. And then so many orders kept coming in. So I said, okay, fine. I'll do a limited amount. This is, I'm not going into being a designer at this moment. I'm not going to say never, but not for masks right now. Um, but I will do some for you all. And so I've been shipping to, I shipped some to the States. Um, I shipped some to, to Antigua. I did St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, yeah, so yeah. I have some, I think there are some friends who are just saying, listen, they want a mask made by Amo. Um, I mean, right now I have a few that I'm going to show. So what I particularly like is a lot of the masks have elastics. So some people request them, so I give them what they want. So you have the elastics on the ears. So it is quite comfortable. Let me yes. make sure I'm pulling out my own. <laughs> yes, I have a few styles. So I'll, I will do them. So there's a plain black with the elastic. So it will go behind the okay. ears. Then I have it in where it is reversible so on one side you have black okay. on one side you have a camouflage material. then I had a bunch of others with um, strings because if you're gonna be wearing and and please remember one all right let me let me get to those tips after I show you all the styles then yeah, I use yeah. some of them with strings. so sometimes I use two or sometimes I use four easier to adjust and it's not going to cause any chafing at your ears yeah and then i did some in like plain colors as well they have yes. red blue green white various designs um what i want to say to people is you're not supposed to be wearing the mask for the entire day yes so even though the ma and, and ensure that your mask is a cotton blend material so it's breathable and not too tight yeah. so looking at the material the amount of time you're wearing it but then also yes. making sure that it's comfortable. So if you have bought a mask and the elastic is pulling on your ears, somebody said they could put it around. Um, they use a particular alcoholic bottle, but it's basically to use a bottle to stretch the elastic a little bit so that it's yeah. not pulling mm -hmm. and causing any chafing. But another thing I want to say, 
is to wash the masks before you use them. These cloth masks, wash wash them. Um, because when people would have bought them from the clothes, um, the, the fabric stores, remember sometimes the rolls are there for a while yes. and they're shipped from else. We don't make yes. cloth in Jamaica. So please wash them before you place it on your face. I know right. a situation where somebody bought a mask um, in the downtown area, just, you know, regular Higlo selling. And what, what transpired after that, I don't even want to get into it. I'm just yes. saying wash the masks before you use them. So fortunately, I've never had that situation with me, but cloth is cloth and cloth don't make your right. shipping from somewhere else. So yes. they're clean before they're touching your face. Wow. So that's a powerful it's, tip. I, it's been interesting. Yeah. It's been they, interesting. They, they, take a lot of time. Take a lot of time. <laughs> but, 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 but what, what I found out, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I found out also, Amashika, is that with the whole mass factor, there's a lot of people right now in the market. When we spoke, when we spoke, mm -hmm. I think you're the only one maybe who was doing it at the time when we had a chat about it. And we we're talking about, and I said, Well, this is good, man. Let's get this into the UK or something like that. And before we even look twice, masks were being created in the UK. I know people are now creating masks because different countries because of covid are not actually the same it's compulsory i believe i believe jamaica is not mandatory is, that, is it mandatory or compulsory in jamaica they are mandatory yes in public yeah. spaces they are mandatory in fact the jutc the jamaica urban transit um company will not yes. allow you on their buses if you don't have a face barrier of sort so that's why there was an initial rush. So anybody who had a sewing machine, anybody who had cloth, um, everybody was contacting a local seamstress or a dressmaker or a tailor in their community to just get something to be able yes. to wear. So, mm -hmm. I mean, across the island, um, they were being made and sold. And I think, they, in my view, I think they are affordable. So the general price point is about $500 per yes. one. You have some places that are selling them for $300. Um, and that's in the corporate area that I know for a fact that you have the areas that are selling them for 300. Um, so I don't know in the other parish specific parishes specifically if there are lower costs, but I would, yes. I would think that 500 is an affordable cost. I know mm -hmm. not everybody can afford that, especially in the context of, um, you know, jobs. A lot of people are losing jobs, yes. laid off, um, for, for load, some sort, but you need to be protected if you're going to be out you need yes. to have some form of protection yeah. so you uh, know it's not like if you're going out every day you can come yeah. and rinse you know wash the mask put it dry, ready for the next day um i'm gonna be mischievous i'm gonna be mischievous what do you think about covid do you think everything is what, what's your thoughts on covid19 um where do you think the world is going or the youths are going in Jamaica because I see at the same time opportunities, opportunities which are coming up. But what's your what's your take on it? In a briefly, I know you might be don't want to hear about COVID or anything, but, you know. What's your take on it, uh, Amashika? So that's Did a very breathe? broad yeah. um ask. But if you want I know, to specify I know. Youth, I was deliberate as well. Um, there, no, well, I have been fortunate to to have met. Um, so, for example, like myself, as I said, I still consider myself youth. Yeah. It sparked me going back to my sewing machine and reviving an appreciation for a skill that my grandmother taught me. So back in the day, you know, our grandmothers and grandfathers knew a trade. They knew a skill. Um, that's different from mm -hmm. knowing Photoshop. And, and that sort of thing. So it, it helped yeah. me to revive that. Yeah. But I've been um, able to meet other young people who, so for example, shout out to the team Citizens Response JA, and they looked at the ventilator shortage in Jamaica, yeah. and they're making these makeshift ventilators um, and how to manufacture testing boots for medical professionals so that they don't have to physically um, be in the same space well they're in the same space but i mean they, they will step into a booth to test somebody who's potentially covid positive covid19 positive so there are people who have found yes. opportunity and i think you really just have to look for it it's not just waiting for the house housing prices to fall it's how do i yes. position myself because it's not just covid it's 
anything could have happened, you know, that could have caused another recession. So it's how do I ensure my own survival? So I would say um, look for the opportunities. If we're still speaking locally, uh, I create Institute. They just got a grant from NCB Foundation. I mean, well, NCB Foundation gave a grant to a couple um, training institutes, and I create is one. And so they're offering digital marketing, um, an introduction to strategy and digital development, you know, different courses for free. All you have to do is sign up. Yeah. So that's a way to upskill during this time. And the courses are not forever. You know, it's about maybe yeah. it's a short course, you know, and now that you have more hours, you can get it done faster. So I would say it's all about keeping a positive outlook, um, making sure that you're upskilling at this time, reading some more. I think the book, the book, I don't finish the book. Um, this is my book right now, the originals. And it's really Original, helping yeah. me to understand the different, yeah, um, about, you know, understanding creatives and why certain ideas worked and didn't work. It's like a nice psychology analysis on everything. Um, so make sure that you're reading and just taking care of yourselves, you can't allow all the daunting news to kill your spirit. Yeah. No, you need, you need, and and then let's let's say shout out to Leela Ike. She just dropped her first EP, um, the experience yes. earlier this week. Which day was it? Maybe Wednesday or Thursday. And so you know we have to still be creating and putting out good and positive energy. So I would just say watch the lens that you have and make sure you're putting yeah. out something good. Oh. And, is there anything could have caused this kind of you know devastation mm -hmm. so you just have to just know know yourself start with yourself yeah. and the people around you so make sure that it's not social media you are relying on but your family your actual friends in real life yeah. who you can call yeah. make sure that bond is still there make sure that love is still real and and help that to keep you afloat to make it through can i can i ask you one question before we wrap up and Getting ready to go on CVM in the morning, mm -hmm. um, getting ready to be a voice mm -hmm. or to be that spark for the world. Having lost someone in your family recently as well, I recall. Um, how do you keep it, how should I say, happy to be there for people? Because you've got, you know, that's what personalities are there for. You know, you could be, you could be crying inside. But how do you then keep that smile? at a time like this? Well, um, you know, I'll take you back to a couple of weeks ago. So yes. I lost two aunts to COVID-19. Yes. Yes. And the first aunt who lived in Canada, um, it happened on, she passed on the, she was a registered nurse in Canada, she passed on the Sunday. So the siblings yeah. knew. So those would be like my mom and my and aunts and uncles knew. My mom told me the Monday night. So I had time to internalize um, mm -hmm. that moment. And then I went on air the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, what did I do then? As I said, I, I just really spent the time to internalize. I understood the gravity of this virus. And, yes. you know, we've been saying really and truly boost your immune system, um, take care of yourself and just ensuring that your mental health is okay too. But then the second one, um, it was, I didn't have a lot of time to internalize it, but you really, you just have to, to know who you're servicing and, and the people they go yeah. through emotions as well you know so they have their happiness they feel the despair they see when taxes raise or, or or goods they experience all of these things but it's really just a matter of trying to pull it together and show po put positivity forward put strength forward yeah yes yeah. well listen um amashika i want to thank you so much for coming on today and um to share your um a bit of you to the people and especially in the, and especially in the diaspora um I, I did a post recently saying i'm going to really showcase a lot of jamaicans um to connect because we, we need that connection while we're over here at the same time a lot of people weren't able to travel to jamaica i was planning to travel i've not been back for four years we wanted to go back my mother is in ultra you know a lot of people not able to travel so therefore 
the important at this time is to somehow keep that connection going. So uh, I want to thank you for coming on and to share your passion um, and your movement, your mission <laughs> at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about chat to me, ladies and gentlemen, you can get mm -hmm. chat to me. Uh, yeah, one of your friends or, or a colleague, Lindley Nevers, corrected my putting up of the, the details for chat to me or, or someone, and I just corrected it. Um, they, they actually, in the comment section, told me that I spelled something wrong and oh. they corrected it. So you got, so you got fans oh. everywhere looking out for you. <laughs> You know, big, and and big also up, big up all of UK, all of London, <laughs> and and also talking about the um your mask, ladies and gentlemen, you can get your mask as well. I'll put the details up because you may want to get one of the masks as a souvenir. Because people are doing a souvenir. Actually, I believe there's going to be some catwalk very soon. Some catwalk mask. I see mask with a hat to the mask. I see clothes to the mask. Everything That's to the mask. Okay. Our face shields, even there's a clear face shields will become a staple at some point. Yeah. I I I and finally I saw this guy. They said you can go to the rum bar and this guy sitting there drinking his rum and then he keep locking and up. He had the zip. <laughs> that that was very interesting. So listen, um That's thank you so much. Huh? Madness that that is that's, happening because if you're opening up the bar and churches, that's people congregating. Um, and who is going to police them? Who's going to police that mm, self-responsibility mm. or you're going to need people to manage. So there are some changes happening, but everybody needs to take responsibility as well. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. And, uh, all the best. And, uh, my condolences to your, um, to you and uh, to your family. All right, as thanks. Well. Yeah, so peace out. Thank you very much, Amashika. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for, for coming on today. And thank you so much for, um, you know, uh, having Amashika here today. That was awesome. And uh, I'm glad that she came on because what it does, as I said before, it shows um, Jamaica and to showcase Jamaica as well. Jamaica, the land of my birth, is a straight up, straight up Ochi, straight out of Ochi. And uh, you can get out, get her books, uh, chat to me, um, her mask, and also um, listen to what she's talking about. And to remember, I think one of the key things that came out is that while COVID is going on and while things are happening, and you know, sometimes we are completely uh, forget about other things. Uh, children um, is still an issue with. Um, brutality and atrocities and, and, and unfairness and damage to children in Jamaica, but not just Jamaica, in the whole world. As I said, I, I'm a practitioner in that area and I have seen what can be done and what has been done. So therefore, it's very important that you also play a part in that. So I want to thank you so much for coming on and uh, like and share this video as well. Thank you so much to Linda Nevers for actually correcting me on that point there. And uh, and all the best and have a wonderful Saturday and have a wonderful weekend. And those on Instagram as well, thank you so much. Yes, Mr. Um, 100 million all souls, buy black, buy black, buy black, of course, buy black, you know, support each other, support each other. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I say before I go, support each other. A friend of mine, we were talking about that. Decide on a day or so where you can support, yeah, support um, companies, just even like, share like share as a matter of fact like and share my youtube channel but i won't talk about me now like and share people's videos you know share it you know share it because you know like when you talk about all of these things like um 5g and uh all of these um conspiracy people share people share people sending you things on your phone late in the night have you seen this have you seen this watch this before it goes down but look out for those companies, look out for those small businesses, look out for those black businesses around and see somehow if you can actually support them by liking their videos, by sharing it, by commenting, by subscribing. You have to use the system, use the algorithms and all those sort of things. Don't worry if they benefit and they get rich out of it. Because if they get rich out of it, it, comp it it's a part of the whole economical structure. It's part of our... Having the the black pound, it's part about having um, 
resources for yourself and your family. Many people are and will be suffering because of this COVID, not just now, but even beyond. Countries are talking about recession as well. You know, even people getting, getting remittances back home in Jamaica are going to have some sort of impact because of the fact that people are actually going to have to pull back with the money that they have because of this period of time. In the UK, 80% 80, 80 of people's wages of those within a qualified um, area will get 80% of the wages. The government actually is now saying it's going to be 60% as well. People are able to somewhat, um, the three months can do something with their weight, uh, with, with, with bills, like, like their, their debtors, uh, mortgages, companies, people are affected. They say they can get three months holidays or whatever like that. But many people are saying it's going to come back somehow to increase in tax. We have seen the mayor of London saying that TfL is out of money. So as a result of that, they have now got about excess amount of money because they're going to shut TfL, which is underground for those overseas that don't understand. Transport for London runs underground and the train service and the bus service within London was saying that it was going to shut down. When at the same time, the Prime Minister said, go back to work if you can. Don't use transport if you can. Go go back to work. Don't go out to work, stay home. I'm just kidding. But something like that, many people have been using and the negatives on that. So therefore, what we are seeing now is that the, the congestion charges were is being jumped from uh, one point uh, from twelve or twelve pounds or so to fifteen pounds, and the congestion charge came in in the first place. Why to stop people from driving in the centre of London? Now, is has it worked or has it not worked? Why is it increasing? It's now become a cash cow. Is it somewhat a way to make money? You know what I'm saying? So therefore, what has the mayor been doing? Two months, two months, and you're busted. Come on, I'm turning this into a political discussion now. Uh, what can I say? People are saying there's going to be increase in many different ways. Watch your space. So what you can do now, what you should be doing now, is to look at opportunities as to how you can create extra income. There are many different opportunities. You have network marketing, you have people are at home, when you sit in there, you think and they contemplate it. What can I build with my hands? What can I do? What is in your garage? What is in your garage? Is there something in your garage that you can sell? Can you have some garden sale or anything? What has got to think, think, think? Because at this moment, there are many others and many people who are thinking about and will be capitalizing on it because so when there's recessions, you've got uh, people who also benefit at the same time. Okay? So that's that's my, my forte. My okay? Bye-bye. Have a good night. Peace out. Always.